Greetings, I am Herbert Herbaderb, and today I'm going to build a pair of plastic Crusader anti-air tanks. As you can probably see on the front of this box, these are Flames of War models, which means they're in 15mm or 1 100th scale. The back of the box confirms the scale and tells us the content of the box, which is two Crusader AA twin 20mm self-propelled anti-air guns and two unit cards. There's also a painted example and a set of instructions. If you would like a slightly more comprehensive set of instructions, they can be found on the Flames of War website, and I'll include a link to that in the description. I will also include a link to the regular Crusader instructions, because this kit can be used to build that as well. Inside the box we find two of these sprues, with all of the parts you'll need to make a Crusader. Not the AA version, but the regular Crusader. This comes complete with two turret options, and three gun options. The parts here are what I've come to expect from recent Battlefront plastics, which is to say they're quite good. They're nice, crisp and neat, and the detail, while probably not what anybody is going to call hyper detailed or anything like that, is quite good. Do keep in mind that this is a wargaming kit, and such kits are usually designed with ease of construction and handleability in mind. You don't want to be constantly knocking tiny fine bits of detail off your tank when you're wargaming. Or at least I don't. There are of course some mold lines that you'll need to remove, but they're pretty minor and cleanup shouldn't take too much of your time. Something I quite like on this kit is the shackles at the front of the hull. A lot of the time in 15mm scale these would have no detail, or maybe even be a solid lump. These look rather good, especially considering they are moulded on rather than parts that you would have to add. The way to make this the anti-air version of the Crusader is with this little sprue. This contains the AA turret, obviously, and an optional stowage box. This is as good as the other sprue and the same things I said about that are applicable here, except maybe for the shackles. I don't know if there were any differences in the hull on the real Crusader anti-air, but in this kit the only thing that's really different is the turret. Or I suppose if you choose to add the stowage box. I do appreciate that you can use this kit to build both turrets. That kind of versatility is always good, and I'm sure a lot of other wargamers agree. There is also a sprue of commander figures, and these are pretty much the same as you find with every British vehicle. Not that that's a bad thing, they're actually quite good. I don't generally include crews on my vehicles though, so I won't be using these. Off to the bits box with you. There are also two stat cards. One is a regular Crusader AA troop and the other is for a Desert Rats troop. At a glance I'm not entirely sure what the differences are, but there must be some. It's nice to have choices anyway. No decals were included with this kit. The box makes no mention of decals, so I don't think they've been lost or forgotten or whatever. It would be nice if some were included though. Flames of War kits do usually have some decals. Oh well, time to put this thing together. The first thing I did was magnetization. Because most magnets are not made out of plastic, and very rudely refuse to be bonded by plastic cement, I use super glue here. I use a magnet on a stick here to ensure all of my magnets have a consistent polarity. I did a video about this a few hundred years ago, which I will link in the description. The magnets I'm using here are too thick for both of them to fit between the hull and turret, so one has to be mounted inside either the hull or the turret. In this case the hull because it didn't seem like it was going to fit inside of the AA turret without some difficulty. This is pretty simple, though it is of course optional. The kit also includes plastic pins that you can use to mount the turret to the hull, but I think magnets are a bit more fancy. And speaking of fancy, let's start gluing bits of plastic together. I begin by gluing the tracks onto the lower hull. There's keying for this which makes it quite difficult to put the tracks on the wrong side. I'm sure if you were really determined you could, but I don't see why you would want to. There are three keyings on one side and two on the other. Very handy. The glue god smiles upon me as I apply a good amount of glue and some pressure. The fit here is very good. I then glue the hull top on top of that lower hull assembly, which seemed like the logical thing to do. This goes into place very easily, though I did have to apply a bit of pressure at the front to make sure there wouldn't be a gap there. There's still a big hole at the rear of the hull, and we fix that next, by gluing the rear plate part in. Please insert joke about how that seems like an unusual thing to do when in fact it's exactly the right thing to do. Onto the rear of the hull, I add the external fuel tank. 
The instructions don't say this is optional, but you could probably get away with leaving this off if you would prefer, though I think the tank looks much better with it. There are no mounting holes or anything for this, but it's pretty easy to eyeball the right position. Next I glue this stowage box into place. This is an optional part, but I figured why not, though it's not shown on the box art or stat cards. This is very easy to get into place, though there's no keying or anything like that. And that's it, hull done. Nice, quick, simple, and quite good looking if you ask me. Now it is turret time. I'll start with the AA turret because, well, that's what the video is about, I suppose. The first thing to do is glue the upper and lower parts of the turret together. That makes sense, right? I found holding onto the stowage box on the back of the lower turret part to be a good way to apply glue without also applying it to your fingers. The upper part more or less drops right into place. Next I insert the twin guns into the front of the turret. You'll have to apply a bit of pressure to this, but it shouldn't take too much force. Make sure you've got the part in the right way up and then select whatever elevation you want. I then glue the front plate part of the turret into place, which is quite easy. Again I had to apply a bit of pressure, but I can think of worse things to have to do. And that's it, the Crusader anti-air turret is complete. It's simple, unsurprisingly, but it looks rather good and the magnets hold it right where I want it. If you don't also want regular Crusaders, the build would be over now. I think it's cool to have alternative turrets though, so I'm going to build them. Putting these together is just as easy as the AA turret, though there are quite a few more choices, including two upper turret parts and three guns. The regular Crusader instructions on the Flames of War site has a colour coded diagram showing which parts go together, and I've chosen to build the two pounder. As you can see I've glued the upper turret part on, and the hatch towards the rear, which you could choose to model open if you would prefer. The gun can then be glued into the front of the turret, which is keyed and very easy to position. I'm not entirely sure if that gap where it joins the turret should be there, but it is. And that's it. Another very simple turret to build, and onto the hull it goes. Obviously not at the same time as the anti-air turret. This kit builds two tanks, which I don't think is enough for a Crusader platoon in Flames of War, but what's it going to hurt to spend a couple of moments to build these turrets and give yourself some options, and an expansion to your force if you've already got some Crusaders. Anyway, the Plastic Flames of War Crusader AA platoon kit is now completed, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's a very nice looking model. It is obviously a gaming piece, so if you're expecting extreme detail at 1 100th scale for some reason, you'll probably be disappointed, but for what it is it's very good. There's all kinds of rivets and bolts and bits that should catch paint and weathering when the time to paint does come, and it should end up looking quite interesting. I've also got to say that I really like how the shackles at the front of the hull have been done. I did mention that earlier, but it's worth repeating. Often in kits like this that kind of detail is very much simplified. I hope to see more of this kind of thing on Battlefront's plastic kits in the future, though I am aware that the Crusader hull isn't exactly the newest kit. The sprues do say 2017, still this is the first time I've built it. Speaking of building it, it was quite an enjoyable little kit to put together. It was fun, not too difficult, and quite quick to build. If there was no cleanup required you could put this together in under 5 minutes I would say. There are of course mould lines and sprue gates that need to be tidied up, though it's nothing too difficult. Of course this kind of kit is designed to be quick and easy to build, so none of that is really a surprise. It's designed so that you can get it onto the gaming table nice and quick. Speaking of streams, nobody was speaking of streams Herbert! I would like to let people know about them and how excellent it is. I build kits like this live on Twitch, and we do so have fun, so come join us. There's a link in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, it would be great to see those in the comment section. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you would like to share, why not drop by our Discord community and share some pictures? That would be awesome. And if you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron if you want to see my videos early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord. And if you are feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends and family or anybody you think might get something out of it. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.